Okay, so I've got two photographs of the Fish River Canyon that we're going to blend together. This is the first one. You can see this is my foreground, okay? So if we were to zoom into the foreground, you can understand why the color is nice. Yeah. We scroll yeah. around, we've got good detail and everything. It looks okay. The thing is, the sky is blown out. Look at that. There's no detail left in the clouds. Mm -hmm. we, this isn't the sky we want to use. So what I've done is I've photographed another shot underexposed and there's my sky. Can you see how much yeah. more detail and clarity I've got? Mm -hmm. So what we're wanting to do is basically blend these two photographs together. Okay. Now what I've done is converted the photographs in Capture One and then it, and then opened them up in in Photoshop C uh, what is this CC 2018. But any Photoshop is going to work. Right. So we've got the two files open. What we're then going to do is go down to File Scripts and go to Load Files into a Stack. So it's going to open them up as a stack. We can add our open files. Oh, sorry, hang on a second. Because I fiddled with them, I have to save the photos first. So let me just quickly save them. Save, right. Now they're saved. Now I can go File, autumn, uh, File, Scripts, Load Files into Stack, Add Open Files. And I can also attempt to automatically align the source images. Because occasionally there is shift between the frames while you fiddle with your camera. So you can see there's a little tick box at the bottom. Attempt to automatically align source images. We've added our open files, and then I'm just going to hit OK. Again, we've got to give the, uh, the little spinning dots a chance to work their magic. And there it is. We're busy aligning and generating the output. And you can see this edge line here. Let me just zoom in and you can see it. There. That's an indication that there was movement between the frames. OK. So fine. Not a problem. What we're now going to do is you can see this is important. I'm going to pull this out so you can see it. This is our layers tablet or palette, and you've got to learn to become comfortable with this. There are our two layers, and they're much like a layer of cards, stacked cards. There's an eye icon next to each of these layers. If you switch off the eye, you'll see the layer below. Okay, so at the moment we have our brightest image or our foreground image on top, and we've got our sky image on the bottom. Okay, it's a matter of preference but I tend to work with my sky on top and my foreground at the bottom. So I'm going to grab that bottom and just pull it to the top and there we go. We've just switched layers. See? Just like so. You can actually see that there was movement in the cloud between the two frames but there is zero movement at the bottom because it's all been aligned which is perfect. Okay, to keep things simple I'm going to just quickly crop the edges of my frame so that we don't have those, um, those bars. So all I've done is I've hit the crop control and I've just brought it in a little bit. It just makes our blending a little easier later on. Okay, now we're going to start talking about how the masks work. A mask is basically a non-destructive layer attached to our normal layer that says this is the area you want to cut through to the bottom and this is the area you want to see on top. The mask is the Japanese flag at the bottom of the layers palette. If I click on it, it brings out a white palette next to the original file, okay? Now, we're going to consider this white palette as white ink. If I paint black ink onto this, it'll show the layer below it. So let's do that. I'm going to go through to my brush tool, shortcut key B, and here's your color palette at the bottom. We're going to switch it over to black ink. And if I do this, can you see how it's painting through to the layer below? All right? Just doing that very briefly. It's a mess, but you can see that Everywhere where I've painted black ink, you're seeing the layer below. And if you want to see what the mask looks like, you hold your Alt button and you click on the mask itself, and that's what I'm busy doing. See? So let's just clear this. I delete that layer over there. We, or not the layer, just delete the mask. Delete the mask. Let's build another one. And what I can, is a Japanese flag? It's oh, this little yeah, square. It's a square, white square with a gray circle inside it. Yeah. Bottom of the layer palette. Okay. So this time I'm going to set my opacity to 100% and I can say E was here. Okay, that's just my mask. Now the joy of a mask is that it is non-destructive. So if I switch my ink palette, so again, left hand side at the bottom, use the little switch icon. You can also use the key shortcut key X to do that. Now I'm painting white ink and it just pulls it away. See? You can just delete it. So it means that any changes I make 
can be undone because it's all non-destructive. Whereas if I'd used an eraser tool, it's not non-destructive. I would actually damage my original pixels. So now the idea that we have here is we want to take this sky and add it to this foreground. Quite simple. I'm going to take black ink and all I needed to do is paint this out here. And there we go. Done. Nice and simple. We've got a violent sky in the foreground in the top and we've got our foreground over there. So that was the one simple technique to do it. Just use a brush. Very, very, very simple. Another technique, let me just undo that, would be to go to our gradient tool and literally just drag it out like so. Oops, wrong way around. Let's go the other way. And there you go. So you can also use a gradient tool. It creates a nice natural gradient. The problem that I'm seeing here, though, is that the sky is a little too unnatural. Okay, it's too, it's too dark, it's too red. So what we can do is we go to the adjustment layer which is the little yin-yang symbol next to the Japanese flag. These are my little shorthands mm -hmm. for remembering what they are. So I'll click on that, and I'm going to choose curves. There you go. I'm going to pull up curves. Now, if I make an adjustment to my curves over here, it's going to affect the whole image, as you can see. But there is a very neat little icon here on the le bottom left-hand side of your curves palette, which has a downward-facing arrow. If I click on it, it means that I'm only going to affect the layer below. <coughs> so now, I'm only affecting my sky. So I can make my sky a little more natural. It's perhaps a touch too orange. So again, I can go into my reds over here, and I can bring those back a touch. There we go. Maybe bring out some blue. And there we go. So now, all I've done is I have layered my two photographs, I've adjusted the layer in one of them, and there you go. If I want to, I can merge those photographs, I can create a new layer on top, but the simple idea is that we've used a layer mask, a very simple layer mask, to basically merge two photographs together, and that's it. And you can have 